Hi guys, this is Tim from OCTV and this is uh, Truthman as well. Welcome to the OC Show Truthman. This is episode uh, 11 from season 2 and uh, welcome here in Taipei on a special occasion because actually today, Truth, uh, like um, our dear friend Peter is not here so we can do whatever we want. <laughs> we can do whatever we want and we are in the new office so that's why the sound might sound a little bit different. Uh, we still have kept the backdrop from the competition that uh, was going on at the HW World Tour and yep. it's a pleasure to be here in Taipei with you. Alright, so before we start, let uh, me remind you that we will have a live Q&A uh, next weekend, so this weekend on Sunday, Sunday the 14th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. That will be th uh, 3 a.m. in Europe and 9 a.m. here in Taipei. So you will be here as well and yep. we'll see who can join us as a guest. We'll see. So let's start first with uh, Computex 2015, which is the reason why uh, you are here. And I think we can, we can say that Computex is still quite the mecca of computer hardware, PC enthusiasts, overclockers. Sure, makes sense because that's the last event of the year. There is no big event until CES that's going to be in uh, January 2016. And so all the manufacturers wanted to show something out of the, all that. We saw a lot of things that were not officially released and so on, like the Z170 motherboard, a lot of gaming motherboard, I would say. But no, no working sample yet for that one. No, no working sample because the CPU is not officially launched. It's yeah. going to be launched in Q3 at the Q3, we don't really know exactly when, but Q3. And uh, yeah, so th like most of the vendors were displaying some of their main board, like, oh, this is the new design, All right. black and red. Oh. This is the new design, <laughs> black and red and white. That's pretty much what was like the only new things beside the 980 Ti yes. from NVIDIA. So 980 Ti, those ones, we could see them running, even though most of them were actually uh, mainly uh, the non-reference designs or custom designs that were just on the shelves or just here for pictures, but you could not really see them working. Or the only ones we saw working was, for example, uh, the Strix one from Asus. We saw the EVGA one very briefly. And uh, now, you have to remind that um, the GTX 980 Ti is like the evolution yes. between the 980 and the Titan. Uh, the 980 Ti, the Titan X, the 980 Ti has a reference design. So every manufacturers get the same one. So pretty much it's the same you no know, box, the same card for everyone. And then they are allowed to modify the PCB, modify everything to make their own version for it. These special custom-made version were not working, except for the streaks that we had at the World Tour, and that was actually not even the retail one, yeah. that was like the first few samples that exist in the market. Actually, not even on the market, like uh, out of the HU, I would say. And um, we saw a lot of special custom PCB from a lot of different vendors. We know yeah. that ABG uh, is coming with the one, MSI would probably come up with one, and uh, the Strix also from, uh, from yeah. ASUS. So this year in Computex, there was still overclocking, but a little bit less than last year. I think that's mostly explained by the not new architecture that was launched. No new CPU, so you cannot really push the existing yeah. motherboard that you have. Uh, so for example, systems. there was no benching on MSI, no benching on Zotac. The only uh, benching we had was um, Gigabyte, for example, on their booth, which is yep. kind of a traditional. As usual, right yeah, that's a traditional. Um, there's now. also the JSK, which were probably the, the biggest overclocking booth at Computex. They were having two events. They had the OC World Cup and the World Record stage. So the world record, I hear there was quite a few records. I haven't mm -hmm. counted them all, but there's quite a lot of them. And um, mainly achieved by the MSI guys, actually. And then uh, mm -hmm. there was the OC World Cup, where this was quite interesting because we, uh, we had, uh, it was kind of like, a, it was everyone benching together for the live qualifiers, even though they were at different time slots. But every time you could really appreciate the battle between two overclockers instead of everyone at once. Yep. So it was kind of easier to follow the competition. And in the end, who won? Lam, Lam at Capital, so that's actually uh, Low Kin Lam. So yeah, Low Kin Lam from Hong Kong, HKPC okay. Lam. So he won a lot of money. 10,000 USD. Yeah. So and that's then, actually a, a, a good amount of money. And then the second one was Vivi. Right. Uh, so that, these two guys compete in the, in the live final. It all went on with some um, decent amount of cash. Yes, and Dan Cup as well. And Dan Cup was video. third. So uh, when he, they did the, um, like the qualification, for the first part of the week, they just yep. fight with each other to find who will be the two in the end. And Dan Cup uh, happened to be third. So Dan Cup from Germany ended yeah. up uh, third in that event. There you go. All right, so that's about it for Computex. Then the rest was mainly booths of small, interesting gadgets and things like that, which is usually what Computex is here for anyway. Yeah, that's, you always have like some factories from China that uh, display new stuff, new stuff like USB cables. Um, 
there's one thing to note that even if there was less overclocking events during the Computex, there was more overclockers than the years before. Yeah, so I think so this year there was never that many overclockers, and that's even what we saw at the at the World Tour, at the World so, Tour which too, I yeah. think. Which, which was the, the most successful uh, World Tour stop in terms of uh, participating extreme overclockers at the event. So if we, uh, if we compare it to the other events, the other events we had also the, um, the amateur tournaments and all that things. And then basically this time there was only focus on extreme overclocking mainly and everyone pretty much... Well, that, that, that was, was the largest event. stop so far. Yeah. The largest stop so far in the World Tour, that was the third one. That's officially the last one for 2015. Maybe there will be some more this year. I don't know. Uh, for sure, there's going to be some more next year. Yeah, of course. So we'll see what happens for this stop. Three activities: one bench body where people could bench what they want. There was a World Series competition, uh, which uh, went pretty well. It was a very interesting um, target score stage. Yep. And uh, we had also um, the ROGOC showdown area, which was an area where uh, overclockers uh, couldn't could compete for targeted. Uh, uh, benchmark scores, so mm -hmm. basically beating the existing score uh, for world records or global first place or even some of course using like the using the the hardware from the partners. Some yeah, of the one you can still see in the background, like Asus, Sony, That's and it, yeah. Yeah. And basically going for a cash reward for each score yep. achieved. So there were um, three rec uh, world records achieved on that um, on that uh, on that one. Yep, by uh, uh, eight pack and Der Bauer. Yeah, the, 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 the special team as we uh, like to call them. Well, it took them uh, about three days actually to achieve those. Yeah, okay. this I would say to them a week. And in three days. Yeah, this is to show how, how right? hard it is right, to, to get those scores. And uh, which was the thing that was really great, I think, about this event is that um, so the R&D guys from ASUS were, were here as well. Uh, we had Elmore and, and TL, TL who passed by and basically even the weeks before they prepared the card for a very long time. And uh, in the end, it it's would maybe not have been possible in three days to get those scores uh, without the new power card, the AMP uh, power card too. Mm -hmm. Which is a new power card to uh, supply more power to the Titan X cards, more power than any other power cards more right power. now. More power! And um, of course, helping them to uh, prepare the mods or remods the card or. Or just checking the card because they thought that some card were not working anymore, but then they fixed them. So. I know. So that was quite a lot of work. And uh, then the World Series went pretty well as well. I think uh, we have uh, pretty much uh, the top two guys are from Indonesia. Uh, sure. Congratulations to Lucky Noob who finished first. And, and Bibo then Bibo Gis, for, which is uh, the young Padawan from Lucky Noob, but not some our Padawan anymore. So it's like the student catching up on the master almost, right? Yes, exactly. Just, yeah, just one little bit it. more. And, and then, then we had a surprise, which was uh, Bruno, who is uh, actually uh, the week before Computex just passed uh, number one from Romania in the, in the Overclockers League. And here getting his um, third place in an international tournament. First, first live event, yeah. first gathering outside of Romania, first ranking i would say they gave in third and yeah. the back home with some uh, some cash too because there was some cash price for the top three. Oh yeah there was about um about two thousand uh us for lucky new a little bit less for uh b boy jazz uh, about six hundred yeah. for bruno and dr wee's uh no cash but bench tables and uh, SSD, yeah. so it's always cool um so yeah so that competition went pretty well and i think there was also quite a nice thing at this event which was the amount of uh, visitors we had so there was a lot of people from the industry that were still in Taipei uh, after Computex, which is usually the case because they go around HQs to, you know, discuss Sometimes further Sometimes you do stuff, have some right? meetings. Yes. Yeah. So they came to the event to check it out, to see what we are doing. And I think a lot of people were quite impressed, one, by the event, uh, the organization, uh, what the event is actually looking like. Like people probably think still of overclocking as something really underground or which you can still make very nice for an overclocking yeah. event and organize and it's etc etc and also like you know we had so those big screens so it was easy to follow you could see the the, the stream uh, we could see the scores and the stream are like yeah. uh, 17 each uh, so, so that was really teams. really really good <coughs> yep really enjoyed uh, doing that event I really enjoyed spending three days of my uh, my time on the live stream <laughs> thank you guys that watched it three days to be remembered <laughs> <laughs> so meanwhile nothing stopped on those esports and the competitions uh, keep uh, going on I would say um, well, there's actually, actually a lot of commission that finished right before yeah they, they all finished uh, pretty much uh, May 30 so that was uh, the day everyone arrived here so that's why we didn't really have the time too much to talk about it uh, the first competition that finished was the Gigabyte X99 uh, uh, champion challenge 
And for this one, uh, Denmark from Greece uh, won the challenge yeah. and uh, won the final ranking. Yeah. So there's some cash for this competition, and there's of course some X99 motherboard. So congratulations! Uh, the old school is best school uh, series. Uh, so the first run of the series uh, was won by ClassicPlatforms.com, which is a the community USA. out of the USA. And those guys seem to be really focused on uh, legacy and older hardware. And I think they're gonna they probably enjoy it a lot this competition. So that was really for good. the old school is basically they have to use old hardware anyway. Yes, well so. that's the whole point, right? So <clears throat> I think a lot of people are going to enjoy that more and more as it goes, especially the guys that probably have stopped overclocking before the new generations of hardware, but still have the gear at home and are like, hey, you know, I could go back into overclocking this way, you know, <laughs> and get a bit of competition points or esports points as we call them. Um, the rookie rumble. Uh, so those one, um, this one finished. Uh, it was the, there was the number eighteen. It was uh, Snowy who won. Uh, you have the MD1, yeah. that was and they, Niu, Niu from France. So congratulations yeah. to the French guys. We are French, so we have to say something. It's from a Team Coquitlan, from what I, uh, yeah. From what I hear. Right? Yeah, yeah, correct. And uh, also there was a Novice Nimble that finished, and there's a new Novice Nimble that started, as well as a new Rocky Rumble that started this week. Well, but we're going to talk weekend, about so that a little bit more in the live Q&A next uh, weekend on yeah, Sunday. Yeah, because we could pretty much talk about competitions all the time. Yeah. <laughs> right, so guys, that's about it for this episode. We will keep it short and we will see you again on Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time to talk further about Computex, all the crispy things we saw at the show. We will have some little bit of more footage to show you about what exactly happened. Maybe some things. stuff that no one saw before. Who knows? Who knows? And uh, some also more uh, behind the scene kind of footage from the... Um, on the HDRBOT World Tour. We did a lot of interviews with the outclockers. Not sure we can show you all of it, but we can probably show you some quick cuts. And um, yeah, and we will announce as well who is the winner of the giveaway of the GTX 960, which we still haven't announced, but that is coming in the next OC Show Live. Q&A. Q&A. Until then, guys, keep pushing it. Keep pushing it.